All right, everybody, welcome to another Avidine webinar. I want to uh, first off congratulate the Adventure Pilot team with their iFly EFB. Always a great product, but now uh, they've announced integration with the Avidine IFDs. And I'll tell you guys a little bit of the backstory about how that came to be, uh, at least my recollection of it, right? So this past uh, Oshkosh 2023, it was a great event for you guys that didn't get a chance to make it out. It was a very, very busy time. Uh, over in Hangar C, where we're at, Adventure Pilot is also in that hangar as well. And um, they they came out to us and said, hey, you know, we got this integration to work. And my ears pricked up. I got all excited. And I said, hey, man, let me let me download this thing and try it out. Sure enough, it, it worked great. And uh, they were telling us about uh, getting that interface working and, and announcing it. And I said, hey, let's do a joint webinar. So here we are. So I'm pretty excited to be uh, showing this. And uh, I know Walter's gonna gonna get on here and and talk a little bit more about iFly EFB and what it can do, but we're excited um, uh, us of the Avidine team and then and then uh, Adventure Pilot to be bringing you this iFly EFB integration, which is gonna unlock a lot of things for you guys. It's really really cool. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I am joined today by Walter Boyd, the owner of Adventure Pilot. Um, if you have any questions, I, Walter, I did forget to put your email address on this, but it is on the last page here. Um, uh, if they have to reach out to uh, Adventure Pilot for questions, but uh, as always, just remember that these, the, make sure that your speakers are on. We will have a Q&A at the end, and this webinar is being recorded. We will be sharing this onto our various social media pages. So getting into it, what we're going to be talking about today is basically a, a flow of how the setup and the integration is all going to work, and then we'll talk about the features later. So the first thing that we wanna talk about is how to set up your IFD's Wi-Fi in order to start sending and receiving flight plans and sending the traffic and weather out onto the iFly EFB app. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is connecting to the IFD. The next thing we're gonna be talking about is connecting your iFly EFB, downloading that off of the App Store, whether that be iOS or Android. Um, Walter's going to share his screen and we're going to do a little bit of a, a demo thing where he's going to be talking about iFly EFB features. I'm going to re-share the interface video that uh, our very own Tom Harper shared on the Avidine Avionics YouTube channel uh, last week. So we'll go through that. I'll play that video for you guys if you haven't seen it. And of course, we'll, we'll wrap it up with uh, some helpful resources and then a Q&A at the end. So... Without further ado, just getting right into it, connecting to the IFD. If you guys haven't seen any of my classes about how to connect to the internal Wi-Fi of the IFD, of course, all IFDs have built-in Wi-Fi modules inside them. And for the scope of this webinar, I'm only going to be discussing the internal Wi-Fi. Now, there's other videos there on how to connect a third-party ADSB receiver. Let's say you're using a Stratus or a Stratux or a Level Bomb, which also works great with iFly, uh, as, as I understand that um, that's for another video. But for here, we'll talk about just the internal Wi-Fi here just to kind of simplify it. Uh, and then, you know, maybe we can get into something a little bit a little bit later. But there are some other videos about third-party devices. We'll leave it at that. So uh, make sure that when you're, you've got your IFD turned on and you're getting ready to connect everything, if we're going to connect to the internal Wi-Fi, just make sure that in our setup tab under the connectivity dropdown, under networks, we go ahead and we find our IFD hotspot. Now that's going to be the internal network. If it's not already connected, we go ahead and highlight it, put our cyan block over the IFD underscore serial number, that's your hotspot, and go ahead and hit the connect line select key. Once you do that, that icon is going to turn green. It only takes a couple of seconds. You'll see the, the Wi-Fi icon kind of flashing between green and gray. And in a couple seconds, it'll be booting up. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. Now, once you've got that connected, you can go ahead over to your iPad or your Android tablet, whatever it is, go to the settings and let's go ahead and connect to that network. We're gonna go find that, that network. It's gonna be showing up exactly as it shows on the IFD itself, IFD underscore M, whatever. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. Um, if it's the first time that you're connecting and if you haven't remembered the network, it is gonna ask for a password. And this information is also in your pilot guides and your quick reference guides. The default password, if you do not remember your network, is going to be all lowercase A, B, C, D, E, F, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? Pretty, pretty simple. Now, just as a reminder, if you have your tablet pulled up and you bring up an app, and let's say this is 
the first time that you bring up that particular tablet to that particular IFD, and this is the first time that you've done it, just as a reminder, you're going to see this green cast message that comes up. It's a connection request. By acknowledging that cast message, that does not connect that device to that IFD. You do have, that's a reminder to go into your devices and go ahead and allow that, right? It's a security protocol thing. The first time that you set that to always, you won't have to set it to always anymore. You won't have to go under devices and allow it as long as you have it set to always. There's a couple of different options, but if, if this is gonna be an iPad or, a, or an Android tablet that you use all the time with your iFly EFB and your IFD, then go ahead and just set it to always and you'll only have to do this just once, okay? Now, traffic and weather. Um, the iFly EFB does have the ability to receive that traffic and weather through the IFD by way of your certified ADSB receiver, whether that be a Skytrax 200, Free Flight Ranger, GTX 345, Lynx NGT 9000, whatever the case is. If this is if this looks like the setup that applies to you, and a lot of you guys will have this, if you have a hardwired ADSB receiver into the IFD, you're going to see another selection. It's going to be ADSB over Wi-Fi. Make sure that that is turned on. What that does is it allows the IFD to send that traffic and weather over that network over to your tablet. Okay, again, this is just for your wired ADSB receivers, the wireless receivers are slightly different and we've got a video for that. So that's pretty much it. There's really not much to it as far as connecting the iPad and the IFD. Um, now we're gonna get a little bit more into the specifics of iFly EFB. And with that, I would like to welcome Mr. Walter Boyd with Adventure Pilot. Uh, Walter, go ahead and take it away. And if you need me to share the screen, I can certainly uh, select that for you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't see the option on mine to share screen here. It's disabled. So I don't know if there's okay. something else I need to do. It's coming your way. All right. I see it on mine. Okay. Do you see the, uh, the iFly app on yours? Yep. You're sitting right there at McKinney. Yep. So, uh, yeah, appreciate you letting me demo this app here to your to your group because uh, you know some people may not have heard of us or seen the app so excited to, and what I'm going to do right now is just kind of show the product um, briefly I'm not going to go into some huge tutorial or anything but but I'll touch on what makes uh, iFly EFB different than some of the other products that are out there and how flight planning works specifically because being able to sync some of these complex flight plans from iFly into the Avidyne is, uh, you know, I think could, could provide a lot of value here. Um, so for starters, differences, um, you'll, you'll notice when you launch the app, well, you'll notice right now I'm on a Windows box and I'm sharing this monitor here. You can see the Windows panel at the bottom, of it. but we work on a lot of different platforms so, and we work equally well. So the demo I'm gonna give you now, even though it's on Windows, it looks identical on Android and identical on iPad. Um, most of our customers are flying with Androids or iPads, but we do have some out there that use Surface tablets and things like that as well. But we do work equally well on all these different platforms. Um, another big differentiator for us is this product was designed, we've been around for a while, we started doing this in 2009 as a portable uh, navigation tool. It's called the iFly 700 that we released. Uh, our focus these days is the app. It came out in 2014, I believe. And uh, and so we've been growing it and adding features and capabilities ever since then. But the, the biggest differentiator here is we've designed it from the ground up as a navigation tool. And we've been adding a lot of flight planning and weather capabilities and things like that. But since it started, its roots are as a navigation tool. Uh, it's much easier to use in the cockpit than a lot of our competitors. And you can notice even on the screen, we have really big high contrast instruments and big buttons along the bottom, very easy to touch. Uh, when you pull up one of these menus or buttons, our fonts are very high contrast and easy to read, easy to tap. Um, the, the screen itself, the map, um, if you were to tap anywhere on the map, it's gonna give you information about where you tapped. Call this our quick info pop-up. 
And it's a very forgiving interface. We're not going to give you the exact point you tapped, but anything around where you tapped is going to be available here. So this was the nearest airport, but I might have been looking for some weather details or airspace information. And this little pop-up is not only giving you little thumbnail bits of information, but you can drill in. So if I wanted to say, you know, give me airport info, it'll give me the full, uh, all the details on, in this case, Addison Airport. Uh, and it's all on one page in these color-coded sections. Again, easy to find, easy to read. Um, and then we've got some really slick uh, capabilities behind that, like I can tap real view and it's gonna zoom into that airport and show you a satellite image. Um, these are pre-downloaded, so these are included in the, in the app itself. You don't have to be connected to the internet to get this. So if you're flying into an unfamiliar airport, it's really nice to kind of see the terrain you know, and things around that airport. Uh, so the other thing that that makes it simpler to use is uh, simple simple gestures. Like we we support tap and hold, but it's never necessary. If I wanted to do a flight direct to DFW, I can tap it, pull up the flight planning, and say fly direct to DFW, and now I have I've built a flight plan from our current location to that airport. Um, and I didn't have to tap and hold or swipe or double tap. Even double tapping can be difficult if you're bouncing around in a, you know, in a rough day. Um, and so, you know, that, you know, from a high level is what I mean when I say we've made this design for use in the cockpit. It is a navigation tool. Um, a few other things I want to point out here. Um, we're looking at a sectional map here. This map mode button lets me toggle between some of the different modes. Um, so this is our VFR mode, and it's automatically going to, you know, cycle between the different VFR charts. Like I'm at a TAC chart here. If I zoom out a little more, it'll become a sectional chart or, uh, or a planning chart. So that, that happens all automatically. And we try to, you know, that'll automatically turn some of the important layers on and off into based on which your base map is selected. So if I go to vector, now this is decluttered. We start drawing things like lakes and uh, airports and airspaces, and it'll automatically add additional detail as you zoom in and out. Um, and then of course we support IFR uh, and, and even custom charts are available. And underneath uh, the map mode are these different layers that can be turned on and off. So if you're looking for fuel prices, you can turn turn the fuel price layer on. I'll zoom out a little bit. You can see we've just added that overlay. So now we're seeing the fuel prices. Or you can turn METARs on next rad. Uh, here in the Dallas area, it is bone dry. So I have to find weather somewhere else. It's like here's the remnants of that storm that's that's passed through. And you can always pull up more information or animate the next rad and so it's very, very simple to use. Um, there's a really slick feature that that we've added uh, a couple years ago that's still getting, uh, still unique to us, and it's called Real Plan. And this is a full end-to-end -end VFR flight planning tool. Uh, I'm going to hit the flight plan button here. I'm going to clear my plan. I'm just going to enter a new plan. I'm going to go from Oshkosh to 13C, which is just a little airport on the other side of uh, Lake Michigan. And so here's the flight plan. Now, the, the traditional way, I mean, I'm sure everyone here is pilot, so you already know this, but the, the traditional way to kind of finish this plan is you need to decide, am I going to go over the water? You know, if you're properly equipped, that might be fine, but you'll still need to check airspaces, uh, and decide if you need to avoid that or go over it or under it. This one would be hard to get around. So. Uh, and if you're like me, I, I probably wouldn't take my plane out over the water. It's a little single engine, and I don't trust it. But the uh, so the other option is you can touch and drag this, and you can kind of sculpt your plan around airspaces and kind of do a big, uh, you know, big plan like that. Now I've got the fuel prices on, so I can start trying to find a good place for fuel. So there's a there's a lot of steps here. I'm going to remove these waypoints that I just added. And show you how you can do it with with a uh, real plan. So this feature, like I said, it's a full end-to-end -end VFR flight planning tool. The first time you pull it up, you can specify first of all your aircraft. 
So you would fully spec out your performance on your aircraft when you set that up. Uh, so we know your climb rate, your fuel burn, and all that important information. Um, you can specify you want to avoid all these different airspaces, that you want to find fuel stops with this plan. You might even uh, have low fuel, right? Then maybe you're starting with a half tank, and, and so you can tell the system that, and it'll make sure you find fuel before you're too low. And then you can specify uh, your altitudes. Let's say I'm comfortable at 13,500. It'll, it'll pick altitudes for you. It'll go over and under airspaces, all of that. And I'm going to say avoid water. And I'm going to hit run real plan. And we'll see what it does here. So you'll see it's downloading winds aloft. It's looking at all that data. And it came up with a plan. It gives you an estimate of the price, the distance, the time, the fuel burn. And it did find one fuel stop for me. I'm going to hit done. I'm going to turn some of these layers off to make this a little easier to see. So here, this red dot is our fuel stop. Actually, I'm going to turn fuel back on so we can see what that cost is. 509. So that is pretty much the cheapest fuel in the area. If I look at the flight plan, I can also look at the altitudes to see what it's doing here. So we're, we're climbing up to 6,000, landing for our fuel stop, and then we're climbing up over on top of this big Class B, that would be Chicago, uh, and then it's it's uh, taking advantage of the winds up high all the way until we land. It will pick different altitudes if it needs to, to, to optimize for winds. So if we go look at the map again, you can see it's taken me out over the water, but it's maintained a five to one glide ratio to land. So since I was comfortable at, you know, 13.5, it put me all the way up there. So it's it's got a nice short flight. If I were to run this again, you can tweak these settings and see what it would do. Like I'm gonna leave that 25 gallon in there, but I'm gonna change this from 13.5 to say 10,000. And I don't, I don't think that would be high enough to go over the top of this class B. So it's gonna have to come up with a different option. And it did, it's the same fuel stop. But this time it's taking us underneath the class B. So it's hugging it, it's getting as close as it can it's to minimize your burn your, and your time and route. It's also going around this, this little class C here and it's not going quite as far out over the water because again, it has to maintain glide ratio to land and all the way up to your final destination. So that's real plan. And this is a, you know, this is a feature that our pilots have, have grown to love. It's, you know, we've gotten some interesting feedback. There was one, there was one plan uh, that that we were doing that was going right across the Great Plains. Um, long, you'd expect it just to be one long straight line, but it was coming up with this long arc uh, to the north. And it was, we figured out later, it was following the the winds, you know, and if you're going straight through like a low pressure, you could crab all the way through one side. And then when you get to the other side, you're crab in the other direction. Um, but you can also follow the arc of wind and get a much faster uh, uh, ground speed and actually save time and money. And the and real plan was actually discovering these routes. So uh, I want to call out Brian, who's he's on this call as well, who did all the development for this feature. Uh, he's a, he's somewhat of a, a math whiz and came up with the algorithms to factor in all these different variables. Uh, and I didn't even demo how it can go through mountains as well and pick its way through passes. So it's looking at terrain. It's a very, very clever feature. Um, okay, enough on real plan. Let me, um, let me also point out we can do IFR flight planning. So I'm just going to plan a quick flight to a random airport I just picked there. And I'm going to say procedures. And this is how you could load an approach. So this is uh, PIA. There's a lot of different approaches here. You can either pick it from this list or you can do select from map and look at it either on the map itself uh, or on the plate. So you can cycle between these and it's showing how it would how it look on the plate. And you can also cycle between the different transitions for a specific approach. And then when you see the one that you're, you're intending to load, you just hit done. It gives you a little warning, of course, because this is not a this is a tablet, it's not a certified device. But now we've loaded an IFR plan, and if I go back into the flight plan, you can see our departing McKinney, and then we have the approach here. And you can open that up to see all the different altitudes. 
and your final destination. And if you're in the IFR low, you can see this over the over the IFR map. You can also overlay the approach plates on the map. And you can even show them both. Um, this is kind of a cool thing. If you invert the colors and change the opacity, you can set this up to where you can see the procedure and the underlying IFR chart or VFR chart or whatever it is. So that's a you know, quick brief intro on how you would do a flight plan. Um, I think the only other uh, difference that I would like to point out about our company or our app is uh, our ability to support the product. It's all developed uh, and supported in the United States. So we're, we're offices are here in McKinney, Texas. We're on the field and uh, we have people answering the phones, answering your questions, answering your emails. Uh, and, and we love talking to our customers. So if you ever do have a, using our product and have a question, we'll, we're here to take care of you. Uh, and uh, I'm also gonna talk about our prices real briefly here, and then I'm gonna turn this uh, back over. But this is the only slide I put together. It's um, just to show you what our prices are. VFR subscription is $79.99. The full VFR IFR is $129.99. And we have an optional uh, multi-platform. By default, a uh, subscription will let you run it on two tablets like or two devices, I should say, like you, on the same platform. Like you could have an Android phone and an Android tablet, or you could have an iPhone and an iPad or two iPads, but you get two devices on the same platform. The multi-platform lets you have up to four devices uh, and you can mix and match platforms. You have two Androids and two iPads, et cetera. Um, so that's our subscription options. Um, one thing I didn't point out is our our subscriptions, they're they're based on VFR or IFR. You know, there's plenty of times a VFR pilot might need synthetic vision. So this is included in the VFR subscription. Uh, the only thing you get additional with IFR is the ability to load the IFR approaches to, to view the stars and departures, to view the uh, IFR low and high charts, et cetera. So our our subscriptions aren't, we're not nickel and diming you for features, in other words. We're, we're you know, if you could, if it's a feature you could possibly use as a VFR pilot, it's gonna be part of the $79.99 subscription. And then we do have discounts for uh, military uh, and veterans of military service uh, for flight instructors. And we have a new program that's uh, come out recently. It's called, we're calling it the EFB buyout. And so this is kind of, been pretty pretty exciting for a lot of folks but if you have a subscription to an existing competitor product uh, and you want to switch to iFly you can try it first everyone gets a free 30-day trial so you can just go download the app and it works free for 30 days but then if you do decide to switch uh, we will uh, you can send us uh, some proof of your current subscription with your current EFB. And if you buy one year subscription with us, we'll add whatever time is remaining on your current subscription to the end of your new one. So in other words, if you have six months left on ForeFlight, for example, buy a year with us and you'll actually get 18 months. And then we also have a referral program. So if you do refer a friend and they become a new customer of ours, we will give you an additional three months last point is we do have you know fleets and schools and universities and stuff but those are you can just contact us uh, our our site is iflyefb.com and everything you need uh, to find out about contacting us is available there and that is my demo in my presentation so i am going to turn it back over wow that's really really cool walter um i, I knew that the real plan was really slick stuff um but after that, man, that that just takes it to a whole nother level. So uh, big congrats to to your team and Brian and all the guys over there for for pointing that out. Uh, I think that's really, really awesome. Yeah, so, thank you. Yeah, and it does add so many different waypoints, though. That would be a very difficult plan to manually load into uh, into an Avidyne. But it, the syncing of the real plan up to your system makes that just a, kind of a dream feature. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I can definitely see the the value, especially the uh, the Android users who may have felt a little um, alienated uh, from from there not being too many EFB options out there. 
uh, to see something that's that's so feature packed on an Android uh, platform. I know that's something that that we get asked about a lot. It really is a breath of fresh air to a lot of the the customers out there that are running those those Android tablets. So one of the things that I wanted to point out, if if uh, if you guys haven't seen uh, our very own director of marketing Tom Harper last week posted this onto our Avidine Avionics YouTube channel. What I'd like to do is, if you haven't seen it, it's a quick little four minute video. What this goes over is how the integration will go together. And, and instead of trying to duplicate what Tom did uh, to really kind of capture how that integration works, how to get the flight plan transfer back and forth, a couple of things that you can do. Real quick little four minute video here. What this is, is Tom basically, he took iFly EFB on one side and then hooked up a second iPad and is running IFD trainer. The same exact thing would happen on an actual IFD, uh, but you can also run this at home. Let's say you have uh, two iPads, um, and and you want to run these together. Now, unfortunately, uh, IFD Trainer at home is not available on the Android tablet. However, for you folks that want to try this out at home and you got two iPads, you can certainly do that. But of course, uh, the same rules apply if you were in your aircraft. So in this example, this is an IFD 440 uh, running with uh, iFly EFB on the tablet. And so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and play this video. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the iFly EFB connected to an Avidyne IFD. For this demo, of course, I'm running the iFly EFB on an iPad. I'm going to run the IFD 440 on the uh, IFD training simulator, so it'll emulate what's going to happen in my airplane. So this will give you an idea of the procedures necessary to connect it while you're out in the airplane. So let's go see if we can make that happen. So the first thing I'm going to do on my iFly EFB is I need to tell it to connect to the Avidyne. So I'm going to go down here to the menu. Then I'm going to go up here to the setup page. And then down under ADSB right here, let's go click there and select options. And let's change selected device. And notice you'll see Avidyne in the list. So let's select Avidyne. And OK. And you'll see that automatically it's already connecting. So let's close that. Now the simulator is telling me I'm at Wire Field in Nashua. Now I want to do is transfer my flight plan. So I come down here to the flight plan menu. And now let's go over here to our route page. I should have had that up. Now you'll see Avidyne as an option. So click that. Upload to Avidyne. And there you go. And it says uh, root upload and ready. So you'll scroll down here. You can see Ash Bedford. And now I can activate that root. I can also clear this. It's telling you you need to activate the root, which we knew. So let's come over here to the IFD. We'll activate the root. And now we'll activate the flight plan. And boom, now we're off. Let's go to the map. So now we can come back over here to the iFly EFB and you can see we have, we're, the simulator is flying and now we're taking off and we're going to fly to the Pelham intersection and then down into, uh, into Bedford. So that was pretty straightforward. So let's do it again, only this time I'm going to load a flight plan in the IFD and push it up to the iFly EFB. So let's try that. Okay, so now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out this flight plan. So I'm just going to go up here and hit clear. You'll notice over here on the IFD 440, I've loaded a new flight plan here. Let's go over to the route here. And I'll copy that so I have it. So now I'm back to the route list. So I'm now going to go from Nashua up to Laconia. I come over here to Avidyne. And I'm going to download from Avidyne. Do you want to update to automatic? Yeah, that's kind of nice. Now we've got the flight plan from Wire Field through Manchester into Laconia. Come over here and uh, activate the flight plan. Go back here to the map. And you can see now we're going north to Laconia. 
let's say we need to go straight to Manchester Airport instead. So let's just go direct. KMHT, enter, activate. Notice our flight plan has now changed and updated. We're going direct to. If we zoom in here, you can see now we're going direct to. If I decide to clear the direct to, and now we're, I'm going to clear the gap. I'll just take it out, clear, and we'll activate that leg. Boom, there we go. Pretty straightforward. And we're pleased to have the iFly EFB community join Avidyne and our IFDs. Thanks and have a great day. So pretty cool. Um, so what we like to do uh, at the end of all of our webinars is we'll run through some some resources for you guys. Uh, if you haven't seen these, these are going to be the places that you really want to check out first. If you have any questions, uh, if uh, if you can't find it there, always reach out to us uh, at at our uh, at our tech support and our pilot support departments. We'll be happy to answer your questions there. Um, but uh, anybody that has an IFD, make sure that you have the latest version of your IFD pilot guide, whether that be four series, five series. We have them in uh, uh, hard copy. We have them in Kindle versions. We have them in PDF versions available for free on our website. Make sure that you download the latest version of that. If you've updated to uh, software 10.3 for the IFDs, there is a newer version of that that is specific to that software. That's available on our website, and of course, it's available on our Amazon store. With that, we have a, a shorter, uh, smaller book. It's the Quick Reference Guide. Again, it's specific to a five series or a four series IFD. Those do come with new IFDs. Uh, you can also get them for free. Same, same thing, just like the pilot guides. We've got PDF versions for free. We have hard copy versions available on our Amazon store, Kindle versions, if you have that as well. You can get those there. Another book I absolutely love uh, giving out at trade shows and, uh, and and talking about over here is Flying with the Avidine IFD by uh, the late Michael Bauer. So this is uh, scenario-based training. It's in its third edition. We've updated it for the newer software that is available uh, on our Amazon store. Sometimes I bring a couple copies out at trade shows as well. Uh, but make sure that you check this out. This is not to replace your pilot guide. This is scenario-based training that kind of gives you a high-level overview of uh, anything that you need to know just to get you started in the IFDs and, and navigating with the IFDs. I always talk about our customer knowledge base. So if you're at avidine.com and you click on pilot support at the top, that's going to take you to your customer resource center. Scroll down a little bit click where it says uh, knowledge base, click that link that says pilot portal. It's going to take you right to our knowledge base. It's a, a search engine function that has a ton of articles in there. So just punch in a couple of keywords for whatever that you're looking for and see what articles come up. We're always adding to these. We're always editing these. We're always bringing them up to the latest information. Uh, we do have a list of top articles at the very top, the most clicked, the most viewed articles. Uh, if uh, you know, you, you can do all sorts of searching that that you would like, but uh, but we have all of that here. It's a great first resource for customers. Links to all of those pilot guides uh, that I talked about in previous slides. Information about warranty, how to activate your databases, tips and tricks, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So make sure you check that that check that out. We do have a free trainer app for the iPad. This is our our emulator that is available for the iPad. It's a free play simulator. Go ahead, you can download it now for free if you have an iPad. It does use certified flight code, so it's just like the IFD in your plane. Some subtle differences just because the, the entire thing is on a touch screen. So knobs and buttons are kind of, they're going to get the point across, but of course it's not going to be like actual knobs and buttons. You'll see it, but uh, you'll see what I mean if you play around with, with IFD Trainer. There is a separate Trainer app for X-Plane integration. If you have a home simulator, you can tie this into your home simulator setup, and it'll emulate all six different types of the IFDs to include all the four series stuff. So... Um, that's it. That's all that we had for that integration. If anybody has any questions, what I'll go ahead and do is I'll open the Q&A up. It looks like this is an, I, uh, an iFly EFB specific question. Uh, Walter, Brian, if you guys are on here, here's a question here. Do you have tracking to store past flights? 
Yep, I see that question from Leon, and uh, the answer is yes. Every every flight is logged, so it goes into uh, you know special a special folder where where it's logged. If you are set up to sync with our servers, those will be uploaded into the cloud as well. What you can do with those uh, flight logs is either you know send them to a log uh, app of your choice. Uh, we work with with one um, my flight book which is a, a, an open source. So we work especially well with this uh, product called My Flight Book, and they have iPads and Android apps uh, that, that you can send those logs to and kind of keep your flight logs there. But uh, you can also use them to, you know, send it to Google Earth and remap your flights on Google Earth and that kind of thing. But the answer is yes. So I'll, I'll add to that. Um, I know that the the, the way an EFB would do that is a little bit more in depth in terms of uh, tracking flights for flight logging, flight data logging. Um, if we're looking for just, uh, I have this route that I wanna fly again, or I wanna invert that, uh, the IFD does have that ability as well. If we're looking for flight logging, that's gonna be on your EFB all day long um, when we're tracking hours and stuff. And, I'm, and I'm, I know that iFly has got a couple of really cool features um, there as well. Uh, the routes tab on the IFD, has that ability it'll store those routes it'll store up to your your last 100 routes and then uh you can certainly do that as well so the question's just starting coming in uh what coverage is available for canada walter can you uh can you shed some light on that yeah we do not have the nav canada charts uh we have uh navigation data so we've got terrain we've got water features we've got airports um so we have a lot of canadian customers that are using it basically in vector mode uh, but it is not a, as exhaustive as we have for the U.S. And, uh, uh, you know, well, we're still working with NAV Canada to, to try and get those charts. They've just recently came down on their prices and pricing a little bit. So um, it's it's a possibility that we'll have uh, much better coverage in Canada, but it's not there today. Let's All right. Stanley's got a question I can answer real quick. Will ADSB traffic show up on the IFD 540? Yeah, absolutely. Depending on on what you're using, um, this isn't necessarily a, an iFly specific question because remember, it's not the tablet that's sending that traffic and weather to the IFD. It's going to be the wireless receiver. Maybe you have a Stratus, Stratux, Level Bomb, or something like that. We can show that. Or if you have a hardwired ADSB, you can certainly show traffic and weather. And how that typically works is we'll send that traffic and weather data. If it's hardwired, we'll send that over the Wi-Fi stream over to the tablet running iFly. Um, if you have a uh, wireless receiver, the IFD is actually getting that traffic and weather the same way that the tablet is getting it. So we have the ability to to show those up on both. Uh, so that answers that question. Yep. And Rick uh, was asking about how it, how it looks on iFly. If you look at that screenshot, you can see we're we're painting the chevrons on the map on the right. That's those are traffic targets, and on the left, we're actually showing the same traffic in the synthetic vision. So you can see it in full 3D, and they're um, color coded like your navigation lights so it's green on the left red on the right etc white on the back so you can see at a glance if that aircraft is uh, approaching you or departing or left or right etc and that's that symbology is shown in hundreds of feet right I'm, I'm seeing that I see uh, it is yeah that's okay. right. and you see the plus or minus meaning it's relative hundreds of feet and you can zoom in on it that target to get more details it'll show the tail numbers and things like that and if you tap that target um, then then you can see all of the information on that aircraft its climb rate and tr and track and ground track and all sorts of stuff uh, and we even have a feature that you can tap on it one more time i think it's called track aircraft yep. and it basically like, like a wingman right so it won't keep popping alerts at you we'll, we'll mark it as a wingman or known traffic oh nice so adam has a question here that i know you'd be really really proud to answer uh, the question is, when you're in flight and you get an amended clearance from ATC and you put it into either the IFD or the iFly app, will it automatically update the other or do you need to go through the transfer process again? Now, I will point out that that one of the big differences between, let's say, um, uh, ForeFlight, right? When you're running an IFD with ForeFlight, you have to send to panel or load from panel. You have to initiate that process one way or another. With iFly EFB, you can set that up, and that was in that video, that four-minute video. Uh, you can actually set that up for automatic transfer, right? Right. 
either way. So if you're if you're more comfortable doing your flight planning in the IFD, it'll automatically transfer it down to the I, iFly. And if you're doing all your planning in the iFly, you can set it to automatically sync all of those back up to the IFD. So yeah, and and the change is real easy to implement in the in the iFly app as well. Awesome. It looks like that wraps up all the questions, Walter. I really, really appreciate you coming on here on on this Tuesday afternoon. I know it's a little bit earlier over in your side of the world, but um, man, this this has been fantastic. Um, awesome. It looks like that wraps up all the questions, Walter. I really, really appreciate you coming on here on on this Tuesday afternoon. I know it's a little bit earlier over in your side of the world, but man, this this has been fantastic. Um, I'm I'm really excited to be uh, showing iFly EFB on, on our demo stacks out at these trade shows and really happy about the integration. And I know our customers will be too. So uh, Walter, Juanita, Brian, all those guys over at the iFly team, the, the adventure pilot team, uh, thank you guys for, for everything that you're doing. Uh, I appreciate the integration. I know our customers will too. So if you guys have any, any questions, please reach out to any one of those three email addresses at the bottom of the screen, info at iflyefb.com pilot support at avidine.com or marketing at avidine.com we'll be happy to answer those questions this webinar will be up on youtube i would say tomorrow sometime uh just give it a little bit if you guys registered if you're here watching you will get a replay link in your emails here shortly before too long maybe about four hours or so so thank you guys for coming out thank you guys for tuning in listening in and we'll see you guys at the next webinar have a good one